Hi, welcome to part three where we're going to be talking about calculating NDVI. First thing is we're going to create two variables, one for the red band and one for the near infrared band. These are bands four and five respectively. We're using this method right here, dot select, to select band four and band five. The next part is creating a variable called NDVI1 and NDVI2. You don't have to do this, but I'm showing you how to calculate NDVI using two different methods. The first method is the method that Google Earth Engine uses. This is a method that only uses the add, subtract, and divide operators right here. However, if you have a more complex expression later on, if you're having to do roots or you're having to do exponents, you're going to need to use the dot expression to calculate a bigger expression. So for this one, you're simply taking the band 5, subtracting it from the band 4, and then dividing that new, exp new value by the band 5 plus band 4. This is the equation for NDVI. If you're not familiar with NDVI, the way it works is Landsat captures image simultaneously in different bands and then displays them in different parts of the electromagnetic spectrum, or captures them in different parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. Chlorophyll generally absorbs red light and tends to reflect near-infrared light. That means that there's a difference between two images that are taken at the same time over the same place, and if we can find that difference, then we can tell what areas have vegetation in them, depending on the value. So, the next method is the method that I personally use to do my uh, band math or my NDVI calculations is you're going to create an expression. You have your open parenthesis. You write your expression here in these parentheses, in these marks right here. Then you give a comma, and then you go and define what parts are in there. It helps to look a little bit cleaner than this personally, even though it takes a little more time to type up and make it look nice. The next part is the visualization. I'm using a palette that I got from Google Earth Engine Help, and I'll post the link to this palette if you want to grab it. There are only a few accepted palettes for NDVI. There, you can display it really any way you want, but there's a few accepted ways. There's this way, which is more of a temperature, and then there is a green to tan sort of looking one. Those are both the ways that people who are in the field tend to want to see NDVI represented. You can use other methods, but they're not widely as recognized. Then the last part is simply the display. You're displaying your values using the map.add layer. NDVI1, NDVI2. These are your max and min values that you want to produce or show on the map. Anything out, outside of this you would consider to be an outlier. Then we're going to use our palette, which is our NDVI palette here, and then we're going to display it to the map. I chose to look at this area right down here called Christmas Valley. It's in Oregon. It's a farming community that generally uses a lot of what's known as center pivot irrigation. And so when we run this for our NDVI, you're going to see these circles right here, which is the irrigation method that they're using. Generally, if you look here, you see these darker areas that can generally mean a healthier vegetation, and these can mean vegetations with less chlorophyll and more chlorophyll right here. That's not always the case, but most of the time that is. Um, generally with farmland, you could maybe say that there's different types of plants, and the green represents plants in both areas, and maybe this plant is functioning a little healthier at this point of the year, and that would be a part of your time. I also wanted to show you that if we use the inspector to check the NDVI values using both methods, we can see that the value for our NDVI comes out to the exact same. So both of the methods that we used up here are producing the same value. It's just two different ways of producing it. If you're writing a code where you just need the NDVI value really quickly, go ahead and import this, but if you're using the NDVI and the need to write more expressions based on that, you might want to include this one. So thank you for joining us for our look at NDVI and Google Earth Engine. If you have any questions or things you'd like to know about Google Earth Engine, add a comment and I will work to answer that question in one of our next videos.